Hi guys, you are welcome to my channel. All right, now today we are going to discuss about um, what gives rise to this particular fault in a star delta motor control design. One is high inrush current fault. This other one is low speed shutdown fault. Okay. All right. So this particular design is our star delta design. Here is our control circuit and here is our power circuit. It's actually a good design, but there is an error. I want us to point out an um, error regarding to this design. Okay. So uh, what is obtainable in the industry is what I want us to design and I want, uh, want us to implement. Because oftentimes when you go to the industry for, um, uh, for you to look for a job or whatever you get employed, you are going for the maintenance of the existing system they have. You are not going there to build Star Delta or to build a panel. You are going for the maintenance of what is um, already in place. Okay, so you're going for troubleshooting of the system, the control panels they have, or you're going for upgrading the system and uh, also a uh, supervisory aspect of the operation. All right, so uh, what gives rise to this is what I want us to discuss. Okay, and uh, like I said before, this design is okay, but it's not complete. There's an error. So I want us to point out, point out that error. And uh, if you go to internet and uh, go to other medium to assess um, star delta, oftentimes you find this particular design is peculiar to social media. Okay, all right. So what is it? Let us discuss about the conventional operation of this. The operation sequence of this star delta is this. When you in initiate the operation, this is a line contactor. That is the main contactor. And this is our star contactor. Both of them will get activated simultaneously. Once you initiate the command to put on the op operation, these two contactors will close at the same time. Then after a few seconds, five seconds on thereabout, the star contactor will get energized and the delta contactor will get energized. That is the one that will take you to high speed. The low speed is when it's running on star. The high speed is when it's running on delta. So when this one and this one is running, the motor is subjected to low speed. When this one gets disengaged and this one gets engaged, the motor is subjected to high speed. Okay? All right. Let's simulate. Then watch how the displacement will take place. Okay? Let's simulate. I put on the operation. Now, line contactor and the star contactor is on now, it's running. Motor is running now, look at the arrow. After a few seconds, yes, now look at this one taking over. This one get disengaged and this one get energized. So it's now running on low speed. The system is working, okay? All right, now the system is okay. The design is okay, we look at it. But let us point out uh, the error here. Like I said before, when this one is on and this one is on, the motor is on low speed. When this one is on and this one is also on, the motor is on high speed. Now, supposing there is a fault, I want us to now point out the wrong design about this particular schematic now. When we experience high inrush current fault, that means the star contactor it's not working. It's only delta contactor and mains contactor that is working. That is why you experience high inrush current. Okay? When the system is working on delta only, the star is not working. That is when this fault will give rise. Okay? Then this second one is low speed shutdown. When this system is also working on low speed only, it's not working on high speed. When it's on, on low speed, then after a transition time, delta refuses to come up and the system shut down. When the delta is supposed to take over, that is when the motor shut down. That is when you experience this second fault. And what is the fault of this? The fault is because the design is wrong. Okay, so let's rectify that now. 
I want us to experience something. Let's troubleshoot so that we can now get this. Supposing this star delta, uh, star contactor is not working, let's create a fault. Let me create a fault by removing this. Let me create a short, a open circuit here so that this star contactor will not get energized. That is, this one will not get energized. You will now discover that the system will still be energized. The motor will still receive power because this one will close. I'm judging from this design, please pay attention. From this design now, when this one is not working, when this star contactor is 40, that is this one is 40 and refuse to close, the system will get energized. This motor will still receive power. We still receive power from this place, this route. We still get power. But the motor will not run. After a few seconds, when the transition of star delta contactor will change over, the delta will get energized. I repeat again, with what I have now and this open circuit, the system with this motor will receive power, but the motor will not run because this one refused to engage. This one refused to close. After a few seconds, when this one is supposed to disengage for this one to get engaged, the motor will now come up. That is, data will come up. So in that case, motor will start on high inrush current. Okay? All right. Then, after that, I will create another fault. Let's simulate this first. Okay? Now, let us assume that this contactor is not working. It's 40. That is why I create this open circuit. So, I put on the power. I put on the system and you now see that the main contactor has closed. There is power here, but this one is not running. Motor is not running because this one is not energized. Now look at delta taking over. Now motor has started with high inrush current. The initial time when I activate the system, this one was not closed. So the system refused to run because the timer was still timing for the delta to take over. So it will start with high inrush power. Okay, that is the fault because here it's not working. That is the fault of this design. All right, I shut down now. Supposing this one is working, let's reactivate this. Now the star contactor is okay, but delta contactor is bad. Let's create open circuit here. All right, now let's simulate again. This time, the motor will run on low speed because the contactor is okay. This contactor is okay now, but this one, this contactor is bad. So the motor will run on low speed. When the transition time of delta and star is over, the motor will shut down because this one will no longer close. So in that case, this fault low speed shutdown will occur. Let's do that now. I put on the system, look at it. These two contactors are closed. So the motor is running on low speed. When the transition time is over, when this was supposed to take over, the system shut down. Look at it. The motor shut down. This one refused to come up because the uh, contactor is bad. But I still have power. Despite that the motor refused to run, I still have power to the motor. So the motor might be humming, okay, because I have power to the motor. So this is where the design is wrong. Okay? So we are not supposed to experience these two faults. We are not supposed to experience high inrush current because I have low speed before high speed. I'm not also supposed to experience the second fault because it's expected that when the system is energized for operation, the star contactor is supposed to be priority to these two, two contactors. If this star contactor is not energized, these two don't supposed to get energized. I repeat again, the star contactor is supposed to be a priority to the rest of the contactor. It's supposed to be the master contactor. That if it's not energized, delta and mains shouldn't energize in the first place. Because if you do it this way, mains can get energized. Delta can get energized if this one is not energized, which is not also good for the motor. All right? 
Motor support to receive, receive power through two, uh, two, part, two parts. One part is this, second part is this. That is when it's working on delta. Then when it's working on star only, it's supposed to receive power through, through one end and one end bridge. If this end is not bridge, this one does supposed to come. If this one is not closed, this power here shouldn't come, shouldn't pass through. How do we rectify that issue? Is by creating a branch here. Let's do that. All right, so this is the right design. Let's do the right design. This one is wrong. But this one is also going to energize the motor. The motor will run on star and also run on delta. So the essence of current reduction will take place. You will achieve that. You will perfectly achieve and uh, inrush current reduction. But in terms of force, it's very wrong. All right, let's do that. Take away this part. Then we're going to create a branch here. And also create another branch here. So watch me do that, please. All right, take a look at this. So this is the right design. Okay, this line contactor is supposed to get energized when the star is not getting energized. All right, so if you are in the habit of making the previous design, you should endeavor to do this. Okay, make your star contactor a priority. If the star is not close, that is this one. If this one is not close, these two shouldn't get energized at all. So this one should be the master, it should be the brain boss about this operation. That is why this one, this is KM2. This one is um, my star contactor override. Look at my star. Okay, this is my star closing to enable power to this place. If this one is not closing, this one shouldn't get power. Okay, then by the time this one change over, this because after a few seconds, this one should get de-energized. When this one gets de-energized, here will open. Then how do I now return power to the mains, to the line contactor? That is why I have this. So this one will return power to the line contactor when this one is disabled. Because this one will definitely get disabled after five seconds. So that is why I have this, to return power to this. I repeat again, the essence of this auxiliary is to retain power to my line contactor because throughout the operation, this one must be maintained power. This one must be maintained closed. So for me to maintain this one closed throughout my operation, I have to create this auxiliary so that when this one gets dis disengaged, I will have here closed to maintain power here. So this one is working as a retainer to retain power to my mains contactor throughout the operation. Then this one is on temporary Retaining power to this on temporary. Within that five seconds, that is when this one will get closed. After five seconds, it should open. Okay? All right. Then when you initiate the command for the operation to commence, this is the one, this is the one closing first. This one should close first to allow this one on, to allow the power here. After a few seconds, this one gets disengaged. When this one gets disengaged, I should have this one to retain power here. I repeat again in a summary. If this by if this auxiliary is not closed, the whole of this control will not get energized. Once I close there, and here is not closed, here will be total power. This here will be failing. Here there wouldn't be power here at all. Okay, there wouldn't be power here. So let's try that. Let me create open circuit here. Let me create open circuit here. Then let me energize the system so that you'll be convinced that star is my priority. If the star is not getting power, the whole of this system is not going to be powered. So let's simulate when this star is not powered. Okay? When there is no continuity to my star contactor, let's power, let's try and initiate a command. Let's try and power the system so that you see that the entire system will not get energized. Okay? All right. Let's do that.
wash i put on the system can you see i put on the system it's not getting energized because this one refused to get half power i close here there's no power there's the system cannot get energized because this one refused to get power look at my hand look at my hand all right so now let's do that let's do the needful by closing this let's close the circuit and repeat again oh yeah go again look at it i have it on you see that this one must be the priority behind the design okay all right so this is what um i have to bring to your notice today because one thing is knowing how to design star delta another one is knowing how to carry out troubleshooting when this fault arises okay i repeat again star delta design is going absolute okay if you have experience in industrial revolution you discover that star delta design is no longer active in the industry is being replaced by soft starter and the vfd i repeat again star delta operation star delta uh, starter is going absolute is facing away being replaced by soft starter and the star delta uh, sorry soft starter and the vfd variable frequency drive but in some industries star delta is still working they are still using it because it's still functional it's still in existence you should also uh learn the skill and know how the operation goes because when you go to the industry you will find star delta working okay so the essence of that is to reduce high inrush current fault that is for us to have star delta all right so for us to have this you must understand the functional operation of this so that you eliminate these two faults this high inrush current fault should be eliminated when you do this and this low speed shutdown should also be eliminated because you cannot have star delta and the star will work and delta will not work you can experience this when you don't have this design we don't have this portion all right okay thank you so um i expect you to share this to the appropriate quarter your students share to students share to um trainees share to engineers technicians then those of us that are in the habit of designing star delta without incorporating this auxiliary should make an amend okay should do the needful by doing this all right okay thank you remember that this channel is for automation but first of all i will do the needful by taking you to control circuit uh, control system you know how to uh, troubleshoot on uh, control system uh, panels and you know how to incorporate devices such as um, contactor relays sensors you know their functionalities and their configurations before you now go for a plc writing program and incorporating the um, functionalities of this to plc okay all right so uh, share this and uh, like also make comment so that is uh, what we uh, mean by what we say knowledge transfer if you have uh, something to add to this you can put it on the comment section if you also have um, a program you want to enroll you check my advert check my advert i have um, let me let me show you this all right now um if you want to enroll in any of this training this one is also available this one is um, ats if you want to learn how to build ATS, this one is um, how to design and drafting. If you want to learn, you go into design and drafting. These are skill set that's available. You are expected to understand, especially expected to have before you go into automation. Like I said before, these are skill set that's supposed to go through. This are motor, those are motor control. This also a uh, PLC that is for automation. Okay. All right. So you have this. So you can also contact me whenever i want to run any of these courses all right thank you